Hi all. Right, just about to start turn six. Um, just watched pa back on the last part, and I'm a bit uh, about something again. Uh, funny enough, I just noticed that and felt it, and just read some of John John Brown's couple of comments. Makes me feel even worse. <laughs> um, uh, oh, one other thing I wanted to check. I'm okay with this HQ unit on its own. Um, I want to check that first. I think it's okay. I think it's just the general needs uh, needs to come in with somebody, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I kind of thought we were alright. 5.31. One or two units may be placed in a beach landing box. Generals and HQ do not HQ units do not count against this limit. A general may not be placed alone in a beach landing box if there are any units scheduled to arrive in the same turn with which he could be placed. Yeah, so it doesn't mention that if you were HQ. I, I thought that was okay, but it was just after looking back, I thought, oh, I've just left that there on its own. Is that okay? Um, right, so it is. Now, did I have something else? No, I was going to go back and talk about this this red and green fire, but the one bit I maybe didn't make clear about it was there. there is a priority when you do the fire, and the priority is, obviously, um, <clears throat> you look at intense fire, hexes, then steady fire, then, um, uh, what is it, sporadic fire. Um... The next priority is actually the unit closest to the firing unit. So it's not most steps, and I may have let that impression be applied. And I'm just trying to think if I, I possibly blundered that one. I don't think I have. So, um, yeah, it's. I think you you would probably automatically think it's the one with the most steps, but um, yeah. So intense, steady, sporadic, and then if you need to select among units with within one of these priorities, select the US unit closest to the fire position, then the unit with the most steps, and then if still a choice, you you choose. Um, so. I might have sort of said it's the most steps. Well, that that's not the case. However, in this situation here, I, I'm pretty sure it was done correctly, but maybe just the way I've spoke about it. Um, Red had all steady fire units, um, so it would have looked at the closest, then the most steps. So I think it would have targeted... Um, oh, you know what? Because this, this was... Oh, no, that's full strength. It wasn't that one then, was it? Was it, uh, it was this guy here, wasn't it? it? was this guy here. So then he would have targeted him, although this was closer and sporadic, yeah. Oh, you know what? I'd have to go back and fix it. Well, anyway, I've read out the priorities there. and um, Basically, you should look at that first. And then if I went to green and realised that green could hit something that I've already hit with red and red could have hit something else, then... I'm pretty sure you backtrack to to fix that basically. So I kind of I kind of read ahead, realised that green was going to be hitting the unit that was in the intense fire here, and that red could av avoid going for that one and pick one of the other four that he had an option of basically. Okay, um, right, and then uh, John Brown's made two or three comments, which um, are. Um, well noted, John. Um, first of all, um, he's he's suggesting. Well, when he when he plays this game, preservation moves you use them all the time. Just you know, you've got to get the guys up there. You've got to move them. I feel like the last probably the last couple of games I played of it like this, it feels like that's what I've done before. I feel like I'm. Um, I've been away for a while here and I've just sat back down again and I feel like I'm being a bit more cautious and something was niggling me about that. So um, there's two or three I've not made. Um, some that make some sense. I mean, we made 
Uh, zoom in a little bit so we can see some things. I should have done that already, sorry. A wee bit far away than that. When it's a wide, it's nice to show the whole picture, but you probably can't see an awful lot. Um, you know, I made a self-preservation move with this one and here, and I've left this guy here. I mean, he's, he's left sitting in steady fire, you think, well... But it was going to be a concentrated target, that. So I'm maybe thinking, well, that's maybe not so bad. But there was a, there's a couple of others. I mean, I delayed my move with this guy. And did I not delay the move with the range guy over this side as well? And, uh, yeah, I, part of me was thinking, you know, I, I think I should be making this move. And I think I think John's right. I think the, the best strategy is to just... The, the guys are going to get hit anyway, you know. You're going to take hits... This is what happened, you know. It's that was the big story that they got really battered up on the beaches, and um, this is what happened. Um, so you've just got to try and limit it, get them to safety, and, and get them moving. Once we take out some of the nests, things will be better, you know. Uh, anyway, um, the another one, which is the one that I was, I realised. I just looked back in the video and I thought, well, why did you do this? Was I, I put this other he hero on this tank. And not only that, I mean, I've done it in the event phase, obviously, before we've got an action, but I should have looked ahead to what actions I was going to do. Well, if you noticed, I'm, I used my two actions, moving these two infantry units from here to here. And the other action was moving this infantry unit from here to here. Now, I'm pretty sure that's where the hero should have went. Um, I should have looked read ahead, worked out what I was going to do, realised I was going to probably make a move with one of these two infantry, with these infantry units. Now, these two are together, so I could only put the hero on the one unit, so it would have meant, if I was moving the other one, um, I would have had to use an action anyway. So, probably think I would have put it on to this guy, but um, maybe not. Maybe this guy, if I felt, you know, and then just moved him with the hero and just left this other one step, two strength unit there, you know. This is a full strength infantry unit anyway. So um so I'm kinda kicking myself at that. And then I've just read John Brown's comments where he says he, he never feels comfortable at all when he puts a hero on a tank. Um and he's got a good case, good argument for it. He says that once a tank's um you know, it's great to be able to do the barrages earlier on, but once they've done their thing, it takes a while before they can get off the beaches because the engineers have got to clear um, all the areas before the tanks can actually move up through the draws and whatever. So, uh, okay, you do have them in support fire and they can barrage. I mean, I was, ha I was happy enough with this one on here, but I didn't put enough thought into this one and... I really do regret it after... I, mean, I don't even know how I never really noticed it when I actually moved these units and felt... It was just when I was watching it back, I thought, oh, Grant, you should have surely had a hero on one of the two. Um, however, what's done's done. Um, so thanks for your comments, John. Hopefully that'll help others when they try and make this uh, move up the beaches and whatever. Um... But we've got what we've got now, so we're just going to have to plod on with that and see how we go on. Um, yeah, okay. So, where are we? Well, we're going to start landing. Well, there's a big landing over here, but over the over the east side, we've only got that artillery unit. So we're going to go do that first anyway. Okay, so turn six we're on. And landing in the east, just the artillery unit. So we've got to draw a card for him. He's a triangle, so it's a C. Uh, we've got mines there again. Again, we're on turn six. They don't, it's, mine, it's turn seven to start, so maybe yeah, aware of that. So what we got a C for artillery as lose a step. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. You really want a B or a a D. Uh, yeah, I wanted a B or a D for that. So, so who's a step? Stays where he is. And lands. However, 
Is Amma going to get that unit to safety before the mid tide? Probably not now since it's lost the step. <laughs> Again, some of these things sound kind of harsh, but um, oh well. Okay, so landing in the west now. We've got to remember we've got an HQ and a general here who do not need to drift if they don't want to. That's an optional. Uh, I did. I was reading there that um, uh, HQs can be affected by mines. Although we've just said we're not we're not going out into the next turn. If an HQ unit is the only unit available to suffer a loss due, due to a mine explosion. It does not lose a step. Instead, it is delayed. Oh, okay. Generals are not affected by mine explosions. I'm sure it said HQs were affected. I'm just reading that flip chart or flip book, whatever it is. Hang on. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so 5.12. HQ and units and generals are not checked for landing results, but an HQ may be affected by a submerged mine explosion. Um, and then, I'll, I'll finish that bit off. If an HQ or general stack with a unit that drifts, the HQ or general may drift with the unit or may stay in its landing box at your option. And then, mine explosions, it tells you all about them, with their exception, if an HQ unit is the only unit available to suffer a loss due to a mine explosion, it does not lose a step. Instead, it is delayed, place the HQ two turns after the current turn on the turn track. A general is not affected by a mine explosion. Right, well, that is what I just read on that flip book, so. Uh, okay, right, well, let's see what we're getting first. Um, will that go in there? Pretty much. Uh, so, what we got? We've got a diamond uh, B. Uh, right, it's just this, 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 and this. Oh yeah, we've got the ranger. So that's a that's a ranger actually, wasn't it? Um, uh, okay. Well, hi all. Um, I got taken away when we were doing this uh, landing card in the west. I think that's where we're at. I just I had to watch back in the previous bit just to make sure. Um, where I was at, um, yeah, and I just mentioned about these rangers and about landing them. So we've got the landing card up just now. Um, I've been away for a few hours, came back and just thought I'd check uh, if there was any comments regarding things and oh dear, oh dear, there is. Um, uh, no... No mistakes as such <laughs> than the cane. Um, however, uh, some more things to talk about. Well, I'd, I'd already discussed my uh, shame. And like I say, I did I did catch this before John Brown made the comment. Um, although his, his comment was, um, he's, he feels very bad if he has to put a hero in any tank unit. Uh, I can see that, it could be argued I guess, um, I wasn't too bothered about putting it on that but yeah you can see it and I think the thing that gets you thinking about tanks is because you're getting preservation moves with your infantry and you're moving them, well that's the other thing, I've been maybe, I've maybe missed a couple where I have been pushing the preservations because of things but however, I mean Put it on the infantry anyway. If you know it, if you think it's going to get far, then do it. However, I wasn't too disappointed with that, and it was, I was annoyed with us. Oh, and by the way, this is a late night episode, so I might be rambling. I might have had a couple of drinks, and um, you just need to bear with me. Um, so yeah, so I caught that one, and like I say, once John mentioned it as well, I felt even worse about the fact that I'd put this hero on this tank when uh, these two infantry units, I went and moved and whatever. So I came back up the stairs and had a look, and uh, Martin's made a couple of... Um, right, no, I've got to talk about this one first, because this is so ridiculous. I don't... I, I don't know what I was thinking either, Martin. Um, 
Uh, I, I don't know. I have no idea. I, have no, I, I just clearly did not think about this at all. This unit shouldn't be up here. He shouldn't have been trying to climb up this bluff and then have all this difficulty of, right, what do I do next? There's another bluff there. I could go on here, infiltration move, or I could come up here, infiltration move, double infiltration move, isn't it? Um, and then, like, attack here or f fight up the slope. It's just so... I mean, the unit was here, right? He's where he is right now. And I chose to climb this bluff. Why? Why? Why did I not just move up into here? Why? Why? I, I, you know, I, I have played this game a few... And I'll, I'll openly admit right now, I've not won, the, won at this game. And uh, part of the reason I wanted to record it is because... Sometimes I feel with these games, and I think when Enemy Action are done as well, it was the same, that um, I get to a point where I'm like, I'm not bored with the game, but I just think, oh, right, okay, I'm, I'm, right, I feel like I'm maybe not going to win or whatever, and I just get to think. But if you put on, if you start recording it, and that's what I've done, I mean, there was a moment playing the German Soul when I even made some comment. And uh, I got a wee bit of encouragement from Martin saying, well, you you know, you've done well and you've showed everything or whatever, but it would be nice to see such as, you know, it would be nice to see the Allies fighting back at that time, eh? Because I felt like I'd got to the point where I'd been before and thought, well, I might win this game, I might lose this game, but I'm just at that point, eh? And uh, I, I went on and finished the German Soul, and then I'd done the same with Allies, so, and you do get to a point in that. Anyway, um, so I've probably done the same with with all the DD games. I'm not, I've not had a victory at any of these games. Um, have I concluded it to a defeat? Uh, well, I've had a catastrophic loss in this in this game. Maybe once or twice. Uh, yeah, I think probably twice. The first time I was like, oh, that's me lost. And the second time I thought, well, okay, I've lost, but I'm going to carry on anyway. Because I want to see the next part, you know, the extended game. Um, anyway, where was I? Right, I've lost, my, I don't know why I was going into all that, why was I going into all that, I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah, it was back here, it was back here. So, I've played this game a few times, and although, like I say, I've not played it to completion and not won it, I'm pretty sure every single time I've had a unit here, it has moved into there. I, I, I Honestly, I, I've no idea what I was thinking, Martin. Honestly, I, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's uh, kind of crazy. I mean, I, I might I might have possibly climbed here from here before, but I've I've never done that. Why would you do that? You go up here, and okay, it is a, an attack across the slope. Fair enough. Uh, but these WM positions, they're not that strong. We've seen. We've only seen one, it's, and it's a one, sorry, just off camera. And it's a one, we don't know what that depth marker is, but they're not that strong. And even doubling both of these, you know, with a six strength unit, that I'd, I'd give that a go. I, I don't know what I was thinking. I honestly don't. So, um, but thanks for bringing it up, Martin. You've made me feel... So much better about the whole thing. Uh, right, okay. Um, he also mentioned, and this this was a good point as well, and, yeah, it, it does make me... Now these guys are talking strategies and that. You're not, you're not pulling me up about my mistakes, but you're telling me what I should be doing. Um, uh, this was a good point as well. We had the tank unit in here that got hit from... <laughs> this this safe hex I mean, remember mentioning then the screaming Mimi's almost hit and then was it artillery hit? It was artillery, yeah. Um and then we had this unit, this tank unit here, and I moved it in here while that tank was there. And Martin said he felt it would have been better to put it into here. And it's a great point because it's still sporadic. I moved it in here to separate them. But two tanks together, they they can't put their strength together to barrage. Uh, I, I thought that's what he's meaning at first, and I had to double check that, and I, I think I've got that right. They can't barrage together as a four strength. 
But they're both in the same hex. You give them an action and they can both... Oh, well, hold on there, Martin, then. If, they, if you both give them an action, can it be a barrage action on separate units? Separate hexes? Mm. Um, okay, maybe need to look into that. But the fact they're both in here... This one I put I've I've now got this one in orange. So all he oops, all he can do is barrage orange. Whereas if I had it in there, with that other unit, they could barrage orange or green or red, you know, and they could also move as a as as a two you know as two tanks. You know, if I wanted to decide to move them across this way or or more likely, look, we've got this infantry up here. This infantry. Gets right, okay. Well, he, he, he can't, he's got to go up and around, doesn't he? But, um, you know, they, they could support the infantry basically, you know, they, they stacked together. That that was a good point as well. And I looked at that and I thought, well, oh, yeah, okay, I should have done that as well. But, um, uh, what was the other thing he mentioned? Um, he talked, he he confirmed I was asking about the artillery fire and would you select, what was it when it said infantry of your choice uh, he feels that shouldn't be part of that so I, yeah I kind of agree I think it's been it's the infantry, infantry of your choice but if there's one with a higher number of steps and you've got to select that and he made, a, he made a fair point that you wouldn't want to take a, a ranger that gets uh, that gets free moves, a five strength ranger unit, uh, down over uh, another unit. So that, that was a fair point as well. Um, and lastly, he made a good point about... Um, and uh, yeah, when he said this, I, I, I had a feeling there was something in my back in my mind about removing disruption... Um, after the fire phase, right? Hang on, wait till I get my th get my thoughts right here. Yeah, that was it. Don't remove the disruption right away after the fire phase, because a disrupted artillery position, uh, whereas we've got here the seventy five here, doesn't count towards artillery if it's disrupted. And uh, that kind of like switched me on. I was like, yeah, I knew there was something. I knew there was something about that. So um, wait until you've fired your artillery first. Because artillery is still part of the fire phase. And my guess is it's written in the rules that way. Okay, 6.4 talks about disrupted German units. A German unit with a disrupted marker does not fire and does not project a field of fire. A German unit remains disrupted until its position colour appears on a fire card drawn for its sector after resolving all fire in the German fire phase. Remove disruption markers from every disrupted German unit in a position matching a colour appearing on fire card. Remove disruption from a German unit if its colour appears on the fire card as a single or double symbol. Whether or not the unit has a death marker. Yeah, okay, I get that. So, yeah, it says all fire in the German fire phase. Well, we've already put this together saying that everything in the German fire... Artillery is part of the German fire phase. That, that's It still happens in that phase. So, Martin's quite right in saying that... Uh, well, there you go. That There's a better place to look. Page 7... Back at the sequence of play, step three, German fire phase. Step two is beginning turn four. If the card includes a German artillery value, check to see if US unit is hit, uh, is hit by artillery fire. And step three, which is the final phase of German fire phase, remove disruption markers from eligible German positions. So yeah, very good, Mark Martin, uh, bringing that one up. And uh, we'll need to keep on top of that one because that can help you with um now i'm assuming i didn't i got away with that because he, he, he hasn't mentioned that 
artillery wouldn't have went off because I had stuff disrupted. Uh, he just mentioned that it's that's how you should do it, and that's quite right. Um, so yeah, good. Thanks for um, bringing all them up, Martin, and spoiling my night. Uh, no, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Um, I'm disgusted at myself over here, though. I really am. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not an expert at this game, and and I'm I'm I knew I was coming into this, but well, any match in then I knew yourself, and then found uh, also John Brown was quite on top of that as well. Uh, but I guess this is your your kind of thing as well. But having a um, a wee message or two back and forward to John Brown, I found that uh, he's played this game a good lot as well. So he's he's he should know his stuff as well. So I've got the two years that are um, on top of your game here, uh, and uh, maybe a bit out of my depth. But uh, yeah, I I totally admit this has been a horror story. <laughs> Try to clean this bluff. Uh, don't know what I was thinking. And, uh, I mean, the two or three wee blunders, I felt. Um, maybe, you know, it's been all... It's, I get away with saying it's been a long time since I've had a shot of the game, but you can make excuses, Grant. But um just shows you, it's, it's, it's not as complex a game rules-wise. Maybe strategy-wise, though. It's, uh, it's just as thinky as, as what any match in our den can be, maybe. Um, Mr. Butterfield at his best eh? right okay let's get back to something uh, assuming I've got enough of the night left to do anything uh, what was I doing I was landing in the west um, right I'm not sure if I'll get right through this or not because it is getting a bit late uh, I just had to say something when I seen <laughs> that big blunder in the east yeah, that'll be talked about for long, I think. Uh, okay, so I don't think I'd made any moves. I just looked at the units. We've got this infantry, we've got the general and an artillery, I think it is. Yep, stacked together. Uh, that's already landed. We've got the HQ. Oh, excuse me. And uh, this five-strength ranger. So... Looking at Diamond B, yeah, that's why we came down to the Ranger, because he, he's only Diamond. So we've got a B, and we're on turn 6. Um, so Drift 1 box east. Yeah, and the Ranger's sort of a special ability. He only kicks in if he's got a, an A result, a no effect. So he does have to Drift 1 box east. That's okay, though. Um, yeah, it's okay. There's just nothing doing along there at all, is there? Uh, you don't get an awful lot happening along that way, admittedly. Um, okay, so... And there's, there was no more diamonds. So we've got um, a triangle, which is an A. So we've got an infantry. Uh, right, so that has no effect. So the... Well, that's a good. That's a good one because orange is disrupted, and that's all that's affecting them. So that's a good result. And do we have any more triangles? Oh, that's a circle. Okay, and then so the circles a D, and that's artillery. Well, that might be quite good actually. Uh, yeah, no effect. Okay, so oh, well, the general's not got a choice then. Because it's only if there was a drift that he would drift. So, fortunately, he's going to go in there too. But, well, we just need to start heading them that way. I mean, remember, he, he, he gets a free move every turn. And anybody that's within one hex of him. And then, finally, the HQ uh, drops in here. On top of this anti-aircraft unit. So... The HQ is going to supply free moves to these three hexes, and the general's going to unfortunately supply free moves here. Uh, it'll get him as well. So we need we need to now move them into better places. But 
Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, okay, so we'll get the units down. That's all the landing, turn five, uh, turn six. So we'll get the units from the turn six box down. Uh, see where they're going to come in and land for, for turn seven. Okay, I just, just noticed when I was up looking at the turn track there, turn six is where we would shuffle cards. So at the end of this turn, hopefully I'll remember and shuffle the deck. Um, I should do. You've got to move the turn marker out of the box, so I should... I should see it, <laughs> hopefully. Um, right, so we've got three full strength infantry units in the west. Ooh, it's all the rangers in the east, right? Okay. Ah, uh, sorry, this is the east. It's it's difficult to get your head around that one, honestly. <laughs> um. Okay, so what we've got? We've got they're all ERs. Um, so do I have any clever thoughts here? What will, this is going to be landing on turn seven. Um, so where, wherever they do land, they're going to move because. Uh, now hold on, no turn seven is the mid tide turn, so they'll land into mid tide, won't they? Is that right? I think it is. Yeah, that's right. So the they, they won't um what are the ER? So they're in well actually any one of these six hexes. Um they won't land in here. They'll land into the next row because the tide's moving in now. Uh, um They've still got the same results, so we're just just trying to have a look and see if we can avoid <laughs> um concentrated targets. What are we? So you've got no effect for an A, drift one box east for a B, drift four boxes east for a C, and one box west for a a D. I mean we could we could stack two of them together uh in one of the landed boxes. Um I think we definitely want another I've never found it great over here, but we should be trying to get something in there, I think. So, if one box west, that could... No, nah, that's not awful. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry. Um, so, I'm going to put him in there. Um, east, west... One box east, one box west. Yeah, I'm forgetting. They're, they're coming in this line, aren't they? Right. So if if this guy had no effect, then he he comes right into here. So you've got to bear that in mind. That's not terrible. I mean, when you consider the mid-tide line is all intense, that hex is only red and tense. Uh, I don't want to stack two together though, do I? Because if they both happen to come, well, what's the likelihood of that though? I'm both getting an A result. That's unlikely, isn't it? Um, right, that's not a bad spot. I'm gonna put one here. Yeah, the rest is kind of rubbish, isn't it? Ah, uh, you know what, I'll go there. I'm thinking about the drift one box east and one box west, meaning drift four boxes east, one, two, three, four. Well, that, that's kind of all right. Yeah. Because this guy's, he's he's making a move. Well, how's he survived in there? Oh, yeah, we had boy disrupted. That, that, that was a good one, didn't it? I must be doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um No oh, hold on no, we're not we're not a German fire yet, have we?
Yeah, that must have been a move from the last turn, wasn't it? It was like a move from there to there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Getting ahead of myself now. Um, okay, so that's the units for turn, well, for turn six, but I'll arrive on turn seven and the, and the east. So let's look across to the west. Right, so three ranger units, five strength ranger units uh, to be placed in DG hexes. Um, they've got they've got the voluntary. What's it? Drift up to four boxes east. Um. Uh, you just think where they're going in it's, it's kind of horrible well hang on a drift no they could drift one west couldn't they drift one west and come in there that's not good I thought they would maybe be able to get this hex but they can't Um, right, let me think about this yeah I don't have a clue so I think we want stuff across this way though, so I'm going to put the triangle and the diamond into that same box, I think. Um, or am I? <laughs> well, yeah, because if they get a no effect, they land there, but they can drift up to four boxes east, so I could, rather than this ending up in this hex, I could end up with them in this hex, which wouldn't be quite so bad, methinks. Um, and I've got this other ranger here as well, so... Um, if I went with that, no effect. Yeah, I'm going to go with DG2 with that one, DG4 with A2. Let's uh, let's go with that. Okay, so that's a landing all done. Next turn already. Um, right, event card. Okay, as always, looking for something good. What do we get? That's not good. Yeah, well, I suppose we've avoided reinforcements up to now, but. Uh, okay, so German reinforcements place one each in zones A and E, 9.3. So let's remind ourselves how that all works. Uh, okay, so 9.3 German reinforcements triggered by events. German reinforcements units enter play when an event card draw directs you to place German reinforcements in specific German zones. For each reinforcement called for by an event, draw a German reinforcement unit at random from the tactical reinforcement pool. Place the unit face down without a depth marker in an empty German reinforcement position in communication. Oh, I forgot about all that communication nonsense. Um, okay. In the zone listed in the event, select the specific position within the zone using the following priorities a position adjacent to a US unit so that's the first priority uh, probably not going to get that placing the lowest numbered position if two or more a position within two hexes of a US unit might get that and again placing you in the lowest numbered position and then if not number three is the lowest numbered position um okay so we're going to look for zone a first and uh, now zone a is across in the uh, east so we've got all the a positions across here he's a1 a2 um 
Now, are any of the A positions within two of a US unit? I don't think they are, are they? Uh, two X's or yes, you're not. Um, one, two. Th oh no, he's he he's climbing. He's climbing, Martin. He's climbing. <laughs> I hope he does some good. I tell you. <laughs> uh, yeah, he is a he is within two of a three actually. So that's right, isn't it? Yeah. Let me take note. E two. 16, yeah, E2, 16, remember reading about them, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, I'm like, I don't, right, um, so a position within two heights of, of a US unit placed in the lowest number of position if two or more are qualified, um, yeah, I think for A, I think we're going to get A3, because it's within two, so, if, if there wasn't anyone to go for A1, which is the lowest number position. So it's um, a tactical reinforcement pool. Right, wait till I grab one of them. Okay, so that's me brought this down. This is from the ta German tactical reinforcements. There's nine units in there. So obviously unrevealed, he's going to go into A3. And uh, obviously the, the other units that come out, they're generally a bit tougher, um, yeah, quite a bit tougher at times. And then the obviously the depth markers that can join them get even tougher and yeah, it's kinda yucky. Okay, so that was um the first half of that, which was reinforcements one each in zone A and so we're looking for zone E. So that's across in the East, the West, I'll get it right, maybe. Right, where are we? Right, hang on, coming across. Yeah, this is shoddy, yeah. I should have went in my bed, but I was just so annoyed to see some of the comments that people post when you're trying to... Do these things. Right, okay. E as um in here, well there's E one, E two, E four. Um I don't think we're gonna get one within two there, are we? No. No, because it kinda it all stretches up there, so I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit to show you that E is like all the way up up this, in this section, if you like, and this column of it, kind of, it's kind of like columns, well actually it's not really, when you look at A and B, they're spread a bit, but, but however, E looks like it goes all the way up that way, so, we're going to pick E1, because it's the lowest, we've not got one adjacent, we've not got one within two, Um. oops, sorry, right, I'll pause and get a guy. Uh, okay, so tactical reinforcement. Where's it going? E1, yeah? So he goes in there. Did I get that? Yeah. So I'm kind of... Okay, and that's the event over. So, yeah, another not so good event. And I've wasted my two heroes down here. Well, like I say, I, I still feel okay about that one, but I don't feel good about that one at all. That was daft as well uh, right I got I uh, had to go away there again I think we're we're on the gemifier though eh? right so gemifier on the east I think yeah, pretty sure that's where we were at yeah, I was just discussing we've done the event a couple of reinforcements yeah okay gemifier on the east let's see what we get uh, oh, we wanted not to get green. Wow, okay, good. Um, now, I shouldn't think about what we don't want in the West End because I didn't think about it there and it didn't come up. So let's try and avoid thinking about that. <laughs> right, so double orange, double red, purple. Well, they're all going to do something, so... Um, yeah, let's just 
start at the top, I guess. Um, yeah, just try and slant things that way so I can get in a bit easier around, around, around the side. Uh, so double orange with a diamond. Um, right, sporadic orange goes along to here. That is orange, that is orange. So it's not an intense orange. That is a diamond, however. Um, these are um, these are um, a concentrated unit in sporadic orange. And that's a diamond with a tank. So that's not affected. So what is this guy? Oh, he's a diamond as well, look. Here's me just bragging that that guy's going to do things. Yeah, we know what he's going to do. Well, if he, if he was in here, he'd be getting hit as well, but <laughs> I think if he was in there, he might have actually been able to have an attack because he's climbed... No, maybe not. He still would be in a better spot. Um, right, so, yeah, that's not good at all because that's going to take... So, one, two, one, two. They're both the same distance away. But he can do two hits. Anyway. This is a diamond. Takes a hit. And this is a diamond. And steady fire. And takes a hit. That wasn't good. Um, yeah, okay, uh, right, swinging across the red, we'll come back to purple. Um, so double red, uh, that's a diamond, but it's armored, that's a diamond. Oh, look at that, we were getting away with that, weren't we? Because green didn't fire. <laughs> That's a cruel game. <laughs> um, right, there could be a couple of considerations over here, I guess. Yeah, see, this is a diamond. Oh my god. Yeah, he's dashing out three hits. Yeah, um... Well, it doesn't matter, he can only, he's only got two units he can target anyway, so it doesn't matter who's the closest. So, this guy's taking a hit. Wow, diamonds, that's not been a good symbol at all, has it? That's four units, four full strength units being hit by just a diamond. And this guy was getting away with an intense fire that he was in, blue and green. Wow. Harsh. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it for red. So red and orange done horrible things. Um, purple is here. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, we did resolve two hits here, though, didn't we? Yeah, so... Yeah. All purple can do is disrupt both of these guys. Um, so I'll just put the disruption on the top. I think that should suffice. It means they're both disrupted. Obviously, if maybe one was disrupted and the other one wasn't, I would leave the other unit on top so, to show. Um... Yeah. Well, that didn't go too well. Uh, okay. Well, that's it. Well, oh, no artillery. And here was me all excited about not getting green, but that was still pretty brutal, wasn't it? So it, it just shows you that, yeah. You've got to just keep moving. It's a good point. Both Martin and John Brown have said, just, just keep going. You're going to get... Sword here, left, right, and center, anyway. So, right, we'll get the fire card and the 
west. Okay, hopefully it's a bit kinder. We have, ooh, yeah, colours that I didn't want. Yeah, um, it's it's coming back to me now. I think brown and orange, uh, brown and red were things that I didn't want. Ooh, this could be a horrible turn. On top of all these silly things that I've done as well. Uh, I'm going to go to bed tonight. Not too happy, I don't think. Right. Okay, so double red. That can hit weeders. Oh my god, that could be bad as well. So, yeah, this is double red. And we've got a general in here and an HQ in here. So, let's just have a look at that first. So he is in steady fire of red, and so is he. However, they've, they've got to be the last two consideration, the leaders, so... Let's see if we can find something. Is this intense? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to take two of them out, isn't it? I knew we didn't want red at all, did we? So... Like we're saying, the priorities are intense fire first. You can do two hits. You can do two hits. Um, so basically he's going to take a hit on this guy. And this guy's going to be destroyed. That's our first... Um, uh, can I get away with putting that just back in the pile, or is that silly? Yeah, probably it's kind of silly. I'll just put it back in the box right enough. Um, so, that's red, so, well, none of the weeders hit, I suppose, but... Uh, double blue is along here, and I've got a bad feeling, or is it a diamond? It is not a diamond, it's a triangle. Ooh. Okay, so he takes a hit. Um, that's all he can dish out. There's nothing else in blue. And the last part is not any better because it's brown. So brown can hit three things. Uh, this is an intense, this is an intense, one, two, three, one, two, three, they're both the same, however, you can hit three things, so, this guy is hit, this guy is hit, um, now, can we find another one, triangle, well, what do you know, look at this, look at this. Oh dear. Um, well, these are armoured anyway, aren't they? No armour symbol. This is armoured. That's an orange. Yeah, it's this guy here. Wow. That's been one horrible fire phase, hasn't it? Eh. My, my. How many... They hit one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven. I think they hit seven full strength units. Well, and the ranger in that fire phase. My, that is brutal, isn't it? That is brutal. Well, I'm so glad I sat down for this late night episode. Because <laughs> it's been a whole look back on some blunders. And then, right, let's get back in it. And a slaughter fest, really, isn't it? Ouch. Yeah, okay. Um, I think that's us. No artillery again, but... <laughs> that would have been salt on the wounds, I think. Um, 
Yeah, double blue, double red, double blue, brown. Yeah. Okay, well, just got to go on, Matt. Right, well, I'd be surprised if the engineers can do anything this turn, but we'll have a look. Um, so what? We'll orange, red, and purple. So that's red. Um, red goes up to there, but this this spot's already clear. And then we go into orange and purple. Yeah. So nothing doing there. And over in the west, what do we have? Red, blue, and brown. Right, come. Oh. Look at it from this side, just on the edge, is blue, blue. Right, what's that? Yeah, red kicks in. Well, red kicks in there, yeah. And Red stretches to here, where brown takes over, yeah. Yeah, nothing at all. Wow, that was, uh, that was rough. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's me. Put everyone back to normal after the fire phase. Well, and the engineer's phase. So, it would be a, our action phase, but, um, it's getting a bit late and I have to feel like uh, I've, I've come back to a little recording session tonight that I wished I hadn't, maybe. <laughs> um, however, yeah, I don't think I can get right through the action phase tonight. So I'll, I'll probably still be part of this um, first video, but I'm going to have to say goodnight to you now, guys, I think. And we'll get up with a nice clear head in the morning and um, scratch it a little bit and uh, uh, hopefully do better things. Okay. Right. Good night, guys. Cheers.